I'm going to go ahead and welcome our next presenter. This is going to be Alan Elman. He is from Blue Collar Investor. Now, let me go ahead and let me bring Alan on right now as our presenter. Okay, great. Now, our next speaker is Alan Elman, the owner of bluecollarinvestor.com. Now, his expertise resides in covered call writing, which is what he will be covering with you today. Now, Alan is a national speaker. You may have seen him on The Money Show or AAII. He has been, four published books, over 300 published articles, and over 150 videos. So, ladies and gentlemen, without any other delay, let me go ahead and bring on Alan Elman. He is from the Blue Collar Investor. Go ahead, take it away, Alan. Thanks very much, William. Thanks to everybody out there for uh, taking time for this webinar. Um, my presentation today is on a strategy, stock and option strategy, known as covered call writing. It's particularly good for average retail investors, and that is my demographic, the people that I speak to. Uh, I do have a lot of information to present over the next 45 minutes. So what I've done is I've asked Barry Bergman, our director of research, to attend this webinar as well. So in the uh, box adjacent to the screen, you can feel free to type in any questions to Barry, and he'll respond to them in real time. So this way you'll be able to both participate in the webinar and ask questions as well. Should there be any time left at the end of our 45 minutes, I'll be happy to come live and answer any additional questions that you may have. Now, uh, for those of you relatively new to Covet Call Writing, and that's the assumption I'm going to make, uh, I can tell you that this is a strategy that embraces two other strategies. Uh, first, there's stock ownership, which you're all familiar with. And the second is option selling. And I'm highlighting that word selling because that implies that we're going to be generating a monthly cash flow in return for undertaking the option obligation, which is precisely what Covered Call Writing does for us. It allows us to generate a monthly cash flow. And during the course of the presentation, we're going to be showing you the main three aspects of this strategy, stock selection, option selection and position management. We're going to cover all of those three major topics during the course of today's webinar. Now before we get going, I'm going to show you a preview example. So for those of you who have little or no knowledge about covered call writing, as we get into both the basic and advanced strategies, this will all come alive having this preview example in your background. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to first purchase the stock. That's how covered call writing works. You buy the stock first, then you sell the option once you're in that covered or protected position. So we're going to purchase 100 shares of stock. It could be any company. We'll call it company XYZ at a purchase price of $48 per share. So our investment or cost basis is then $4,800. Now, once we own these shares and we're in that covered or protected position, we are now free to sell the option. So what we're doing here, folks, is we are selling some unknown person because everything's done online with the click of a computer, the right but not the obligation to buy our shares from us at a price that we determine by a date that we determine, and in return for undertaking this obligation, we are paid a cash premium that's determined by the market. Now, in this hypothetical, we're going to buy the shares for 48, agree to sell them for 50, and a typical option in a scenario like this would be about $1.50 per share or $150 for the 100 shares. Now, a $150 initial profit on a cost basis of $4,800 represents an initial 3.1% one month return. If we could do that every month, that would annualize out to 37 percent. Now, at the end of the month, there are two possible major outcomes. In the first scenario, let's assume for a moment that the price of the stock never supersedes the agreed upon $50 sales price. Let's say it stays at 48. Well, the option buyer is not going to opt to buy our shares from us at 50 when they could be purchased at market for less. So the option expires worthless. We keep the $150 no matter what, so let's get that out on the table right now, that once we generate that cash into our account, which is instantaneously, it's ours to keep no matter what happens at the end of the contract. 
So the option expires worthless. We keep the $150. We still own the shares, and now we're free to sell another option the next month. Our profit on the option side was 3.1% for the one month. Now, I generally sell only one-month options, and I'll be explaining that as we go along today. So all of the slides you're going to see in today's webinar represent one-month returns. In the sec second possible major outcome, we're going to assume the price of the stock does, in fact, go above the $50 agreed upon sales price. Uh, in that case, the option buyer is going to exercise that option, buy our shares from us at 50 and turn around and sell it at market at that higher price. Let's assume for a moment that the stock moved to 52. Well, the option buyer will then generate a profit by exercising and then selling at the market price of 52. However, we are the option sellers, so let's have a look at this trade now through our eyes. We first generated $150 on the sale of the option. Now we've generated an additional $200 on the sale of the stock. Our total one-month profit is $350, and on a cost basis of $4,800, that represents a 7.3% one-month return. Now, if we could do that every month, it annualizes out to that humongous number you see at the bottom of the screen. So let me, let me tell you right now, the obvious, that you are not going to generate this type of return on every single position in your portfolio every single month of the year. However, in normal market conditions, and in particular in bull market conditions, you will see several of these in your portfolio, and I'm going to tell you as we go along how to take uh, advantage of those situations. Any strategy you use, you must be able to talk the talk. So I'm going to review with you now a few of the main missions that you need to know using this great strategy of covered call writing. Start all basics. What is an option? Well, an option is the kind that allows the, the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a hundred shares of stock price. That's called the strike price, and it was fifty dollars in our preview. A specified date. That's called the expiration date, and it was a one in interview example. And you need to know that most options expire on the third of the month. Now a call option, which is all we're going to be dealing with in today's webinar, is like to buy a hundred shares of stock at a specified price. So let's do here. We are selling to some unknown person the right but not the our shares from us at a price that we determine by a date in return for under this Undertaking this obligation, we are paid a premium that's determined by the market. Now, a put option uh, gives the whole to sell shares at a specified price, and we will not be dealing with put options. Okay, the next three definitions are important, and these are the option. Remember that price that we agree to sell our shares for, as it relates. For the stock. So there are three definitions. The first one is at where the strike price is the same as the market value of the stock. Example, you buy a stock for $50 and agree to sell it for $50. Yes, folks, look at that. The second one, which is the one that's the most difficult to understand, least used of all the strike prices by covered call writers, and if you kind of how to use the in the money strike, you will have an advantage of a most all people, and you'll see some examples as we move along. And this is where the strike price is actually lower than the current market value of the stock. Buy a stock for fifty-six dollars and agree to sell it for fifty dollars. What do you might be thinking? The answer is the premium that we're going to get in this, that option will compensate us for that $6 difference plus a little bit more, a little bit that represents our profit. And I'm going to break that down for you on the night. The final of these three definitions is the out-of-the-money 
the popular strike price used by covered call writers by far that I used in my preview and that's where the price that we agree to sell our shares for are part of the current value of the stock. The example I gave was that you bought a stock for $50 and sell it for 50 The reason this strike price is so popular is that it allows the trader to generate two income streams in the same month with the same stock. One from the sale of the option, the other from share. Okay, we have two more definitions now. And uh, we'll look at the screen. The premium or the cash that we generate from the sale of our options consists intrinsic value plus time value. Now, the only price as intrinsic value is the in the money strike price. The example like you can see on the chart now is you buy a stock for 56 and sell the $50 option. Now, if you generated an $8 premium from the sale of that option, $6 is intrinsic value. It's the amount that the $50 strike price is in the money, 56 minus 50. So $6 is intrinsic value, not profit. The remaining $2 is called time value, and that, folks, is our initial profit when we sell an in-the-money strike. So if you counted all $8 from the sale of that option as profit, you will have then exaggerated your profit for that particular trade. You must deduct the intrinsic value. Now let me stop and give you some good news here. I have developed a calculator, it's become known as the Elman Calculator, that will do all the math and legwork for you. It will deduct intrinsic value from the premiums to give you your true profit. And at the end of today's webinar, I'll tell you how all of you can get a free copy of the Elman Calculator. Okay, so what are we doing with covered call writing? We're selling, we're buying stocks and selling call options on a share-for-share -share basis. So if you wanted to sell one options contract, you must first own 100 shares of stock. Five contracts, you must first own 500 shares of stock. So what that means is when you purchase stocks or exchange traded funds for purposes of selling covered calls, you must purchase them in 100 share increments. Now, whatever strategy you're using, you must have some very good reasons why you're using those strategies. And the reason should not be that I told you to. It should be because you've done your due diligence and you've made an informed, non-emotional decision based on sound fundamental, technical, and common sense principles that this is the right strategy for you and your family. Now, on the screenshot, you could see the reasons why I use covered call writing, and it has been the go-to stock and option strategy for me and my family over the last 20 years. I'm going to briefly discuss the ones I've highlighted, and the rest you could read right off the screen. So of all the low-risk strategies that I've tried, covered call writing yields the highest returns. And that's probably the most important of all these nine reasons. The second highlighted reason is that you're in both a long stock and a short option position. There is so much we could do to mitigate losses, turn losses into gains, enhance gains. I've actually written an entire book on this one top topic of position management for covered call writing. We have a huge amount of control, and that's one of the things that attracted me to this strategy. The third highlighted reason is that you can compound your money in minutes. Folks, when you push that button on your computer to sell that option, that cash is in your account instantaneously. And depending on the brokerage available for you to use that day or the next. Now, we're going to use a large number now. If you had a bro an account of 300000 and every month you generated $10,000, in, in call option premiums, you could take that $10,000, purchase new shares with them, and then immediately sell the call options on those newly acquired shares, thereby compounding your money in minutes. And the final highlighted uh, reason 
is that the government considers this strategy safe enough and appropriate for your self-directed IRA. So whenever possible, you should use it in sheltered accounts. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would be remiss if I didn't also include a slide of the disadvantages or risks, because any strategy that's going to pay you higher than a risk-free return has risk in it. And uh, so let's go over those now, and that will help you make a decision as to whether or not this could be the right strategy for you. Let's start off with the obvious, that if the price of the stock declines below the break-even, you can start to lose money. And let's go back to our preview example. We bought the stock for 48. We agreed to sell it for 50 and generated an options credit of $1.50, making our break-even 46.50. So if the price of the stock begins to decline below 46.50, we could start to lose money. But that's, of course, when our exit strategy or position management arsenal comes into play, and we're going to touch upon that as well at the end of today's webinar. Now, number two is the real main disadvantage to covet call writing, so please focus in on that one. And the profit potential is limited by the strike price. So let me explain, and we'll go back to our preview example. We bought the stock for 48, we agreed to sell it for 50. Let's assume for a moment that some major announcement comes out, perhaps FDA announcement of a drug approval, a stock split, a dividend distribution, and boom, the price of the stock goes to the moon. It's $60 in a week. Now, we've agreed, agreed to sell it for 50, and we'd love to get our hands on those additional 10 points, but we can't because of our option obligation. However, as I wrote on the slide, don't get greedy, if you generated more than 7% in one month on one particular trade, pat yourself on the back, say, nice job, Alan, and move on to the next trade. The third is assignment risk. That means that because we are selling American style options, which was uh, touched upon by our last speaker, the option holder can exercise at any time during the course of the contract up to 4 p.m. Eastern Time on expiration Friday. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, that will not happen until the day after expiration Friday and only if the price of the stock is higher than the strike price. So since we know when it's going to happen, we could use one of our exit strategies to avoid it from happening, and you'll see that in action at the end of today's webinar. A rare exception to that is when there is a dividend that will be distributed uh, prior to expiration, more precisely the ex-dividend date prior to expiration, and my material will show you how to avoid, avoid that as well if you choose to. It's up to you. You have that incredible amount of control. And finally, and this probably applies to any of the strategies that you're learning about today, there is a learning curve and a time commitment. And for the average retail investor just starting out, I would estimate that to be three to four months before you master all three aspects of this strategy, stock selection, option selection, position management, before you should risk even one penny of your hard-earned money. Now, stock or ETF selection consists of three things. We'll go through them briefly. The detailed information is in my books and DVDs. Uh, I will show you what I use, and uh, again, the detailed information is in my material. But to select an underlying security, it has to be an elite stock, an elite ETF. So we do fundamental analysis, technical analysis, and we include some uh, common sense principles that I'll show you in a moment. And uh, these are the three fundamental screens that I use. Two of them are from Investors Business Daily, the IBD 50, which I've had huge success with relating to covered call writing. These are elite stocks fundamentally in terms of uh, sales and earnings growth, and they have positive momentum as well in terms of price. Uh, I use the IBD Smart Select Ratings, which is a great screen also. You have to be an IBD member to access uh, this screen. And that uh, rates not only the stock, but the industry the stock is in from both a fundamental and technical perspective. And finally, I look at the MSN Scouter rating. Uh, if you're interested, I could send you the link to this. Uh, it's free. And what they've done is taken 10 years of historical data. They've quantified it into equations 
and they've developed a ranking system one to ten. The higher the number, the more likely that stock is to outperform the market over the next six months and with the least amount of volatility. So those are the three uh, principally fundamental screens that I use. Now from a common sense perspective, I always avoid earnings reports. That's the most important of our common sense principles. Way too much risk. Therefore, uh, since most companies report quarterly, I am rarely in a stock more than two months at a time in my covered call writing portfolio. In the same regard, there are a few companies, about 10 now, there used to be about 80, that report same store retail sales on a monthly rather than a quarterly basis. These reports act just like earnings reports, and therefore, since they report monthly, they're totally banned from consideration in the BCI methodology as it relates to covered call writing. And for those of you uh, interested in this list at the end of the presentation, I could tell you where to access it for free from my website. Uh, we require a minimum trading volume of 250,000 shares a day. Uh, that's for liquidity purposes and uh, good price execution. Uh, no one stock or industry should represent more than 20% of your portfolio, and you should try to allocate an equivalent amount of cash to each position. Now, I uh, certainly don't have enough time to get into the specifics of technical analysis, but I'm happy to show you the parameters that I use and I've been successful using as it relates to covered call cool writing. Uh, I use a moving average, exponential, meaning that the recent prices are weighted more heavily than the, the previous prices, and that's to identify trend. Now, momentum we identify using the MACD histogram and the stochastic oscillator. And if a stock is showing a positive upward momentum, that means that the institutional investors are supporting that stock, not you and me. So uh, that's a clue as to what the uh, big boys are doing, and that's very important in the uh, behavior and the price execution of a particular stock. And then we look at volume to uh, basically uh, clarify whether or not these other parameters are meaningful in terms of changing from bullish to bearish. So uh, volume confirmation is an important parameter as well. And this is a typical price chart that we look at. And my team screens every single stock uh, that's in our, uh, on our watch list uh, technically and lets you know how strong the technical parameters are. The top portion are the moving averages. And of course, we want to see upward momentum uh, with the shorter term blue line above the longer term red line. Uh, the MACD histogram, a momentum oscillator, these blue bars here, we want them above zero and ascending. Here you see them above zero but descending. So we have a mixed picture here. The uh, stochastic oscillator, we want ascending. You see it moving down, so that's a little concern. And then, of course, the volume here, which is going down as the price is going up. And I view this as a rocket ship heading to the moon that's running out of fuel. So if we were to use, see a price chart like this, either we would avoid it or we would sell an in-the-money strike, which gives us extra protection, and I'll be explaining that to you in a moment. So the point I'm making here is that everything ties together. Analysis of the stock, decision as to which strike price to use, and then position management. Here's how we uh, screen our stocks. The top blue bar at the top is what my team does in terms of the fundamental, technical, and common sense screening. And in my material, I explain how we do this. No secrets here, folks. You could do it yourself if you'd rather, or we could do it for you. This is what the watch list would look like. The running list is over here in this column. And then we give a lot of additional information, like earnings report, industry rank, beta of a stock, its volatility, dividend yield, and a lot more. So uh, that just gives you an idea of what our watch list looks like. But once again, we explain to you in our material how to do this should you decide you want to do it yourself. Now, at this point now, what we've done is we have generated a watch list of the greatest performing stocks in the greatest performing industries, but we haven't yet made a penny. So let's make some money, folks. To do that, we need to access the options chain, which is a price list of options for a particular security. Now, whatever brokerage you're using, they're going to have this information, but there are also a lot of free sites that will give you this information, like finance.yahoo. 
what you do is enter the ticker, look for the options link, and boom, you're going to see something like this. So let me orient you now as to what an options chain looks like and the information you can glean from it. First on the upper right, circled in red, you see the price of Nuance at 2407. Column 1 are the strike prices. Remember, those are the prices you can agree to sell your shares for. And uh, I have highlighted in green the $25 strike price, which is out of the money, higher than the current market value of the stock. Column 2 is simply the ticker symbol for that option, which includes the ticker symbol for the stock, the expiration date, the strike price, and if you could see it, there's a little C in the middle, which means call option. All the way over to the right, column 3, you can see the open interest, which tells you how popular that option is. A very low liquidity option is something we want to avoid. I like to see a minimum of 100 contracts. Uh, in this particular case, it's 12,000. It's uh, uh, very popular, and the option liquidity is not a, not a factor here at all. It's no problem. Okay, let's go to the middle of the screenshot now, where that red arrow is in the middle. It says bid. We have a bid and an ask column. We sell at the bid, the lower. We buy at the ask, the higher. The difference is pocketed by the uh, gazillionaire market makers. So they make money whether we buy or sell, win or lose. So they're making money all the time. But our concern right now is selling at the bid. And in this case, the bid is $0.75. Cents. So $75 per contract on a cost basis of 2407, 2407 for 100 shares. And that represents an initial one month return of 3%. Now, should Nuance go from 2407 to the 25 strike, we will have generated another $93 per contract or another 4%. Total possible return on this particular trade, 3 plus 4 or 7%. Remember, when you're calculating your returns, it's the time value only. So if you sell an in-the-money strike, deduct the intrinsic value the for you. Here's an old screenshot of Apple when it was 93. That's before it went up to almost $700 and then split. The reason I show this in my presentations is because the ticker symbols, the second column for old and symbols. So uh, they don't make as much sense as the newer ones do. So should you buy options published before 2010, you're going to see, the, see these weird levels you do in my first two books. But in any case, let's do the math. 593, we're going to go to the 210 out of the money strike and $15 per contract. Now, $815 on a cost basis of five nine represents a 4% one month return. Should app go five nine up to the 210 strike, we've now generated an additional $400 or another 2%. So we have the possibility here of a 6% month return. Here's a more recent screenshot of SY. I traded 3736. So let's take a look at both an in the money 55 lower than current market value and the out of the money 60 call higher than the current market. You could see that the open interest is not a problem. And you could remember these two bid to 240. So let's put that into the Elman calculator. The blue cells with the you glean from the options chain. The uh, price of the stock, 57, the strike prices, 55 and 60. The option premiums, we learn more. Both options expired on the same date in February. Now, fill in the cells, the white cells become populated. So let's break this down for you. From the money on strike, the calculated deducts the intrinsic value, 232. That's the difference between the market value, 57.32, and the strike price from the total premium. The true time value initial profit you're going to generate return 0.7%. Now, upside potential is zero. If the price goes to the moon, you're not going to get any more because of your option obligation. 
to sell D5. However, and here's the important thing about in the money strikes, concentrate on this. The downside protection of percent is 4%. What that means is if the price drops from 52 to 57 to 5650 all the way down to 55 we are still guaranteed a 4.7 percent on three stated differently we are guaranteed that 4.7 percent one month as low appreciation does not exceed four percent by expiration now Let's look at the in the money, the out of the money strike, sixty dollars higher than current value. We see here that it has upside potential of two sixty eight. That means we could generate more cash if the price of the stock moves from fifty seven thirty two up to the sixty dollars strike price. We are we are generating an initial option profit of four point two percent. That's two forty divided by fifty seven thirty two. Calculator will do all that for you. Now we have upside potential of another 4.7%. That's the 268. So in this particular example, we have the possibility of an 8.9% one month return. Now downside protection of the option profit is zero. What that means is if the price of the stock starts dipping from 57.32, we start eating into our 4.2% profit. Of course, all option uh, situations with covered calls have break-evens, but I'm not talking about that now. I'm talking about generating a time value profit and then protecting that profit or enhancing that profit. Now here's a strategy I use in my mother's account where I sell covered calls on exchange traded funds. Now these are mutual funds that behave like stocks and many of them have options associated with them. So here the Qs were trading at 88.73, sell the 89 call for $1.16. Feed it into the calculator and you see that you generate an initial return of 1.3% with the possibility of another 0.3% if it goes from the 88.73 current market value up to the 89 strike and the potential of a 1.6% one month return which annualizes out still to a very nice 19%. The advantage of uh, ETFs is instant diversification. You need less cash to get started and be diversified, less management. The disadvantage is the securities usually have less implied volatility and therefore lower option premiums. Now the last two topics I'm going to cover in today's webinar, uh, managing our positions, which is uh, we've gone through the stock selection process using fundamental technical analysis common sense principles like avoiding earnings reports. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about strike price selection, which we've already touched upon, and then show you a couple of exit strategies. The in the money strike, the most conservative of all the strike prices, the example I gave, you buy a stock for 56 and agree to sell it for 50. We use that when we're concerned about the market, bear market conditions, volatile market conditions, mixed chart technicals. Get that insurance policy, that downside protection, which, by the way, is the only insurance policy that I know about that's not paid for by us. It is paid for by the option buyer. The at the money strike is a bullish covered call strategy. The example we gave, buy a stock for 50, agree to sell it for 50. That will give you the highest initial return, no downside protection of that profit, no upside potential. And finally, the most popular strike price, the out of the money strike, buy a stock for 48, agree to sell it for 50. We have the opportunity for two income streams in the same month with the same cash, uh, buying a stock for 48, selling the option, generating the option premium, and share appreciation up to the strike price. Here's a stock that was trading at 3703. We're going to look at the 35, 3750, and $40 call options, feed them into the Elman calculator and just concentrate on this upper right quadrant here. Now, if we sold the 35 in the money strike, if we were bearish on the market, or if it had mixed chart technicals, folks, how about a 2.3% one month profit with an insurance policy of 5.5%? 5 
that stock price can drop by 5.5% and we're still guaranteed a 2.3% one month return. What if we're bullish, sell the 3750 slightly out of the money strike, generate an initial return of 3.9% with the possibility of another 1.3% for better than a 5% one month return. All right, now we're getting into exit strategies in the last couple of minutes that we have here. Uh, and there are five things that can happen, folks, and we're going to keep it real simple, but you know this is the truth. The price can go up a lot. If that happens, we win. We've generated the option premium profit plus share appreciation from purchase price to the strike. Price can go up a little. We win. We've generated our option premium plus any share appreciation from purchase price up to and between the strike price. The price could stay the same. We win. We've generated our option profit. We still own the shares, and now we're free to sell an option the next month. The price can go down a little. We probably win. Folks, if we generated 3% on the sale of that option and the stock price dipped by 1% to 2%, we have still generated a 1% to 2% one-month return, still not too shabby. And finally, and probably the one that I want you to focus in on the most, the price can go down a lot. And here we have the possibility of losing, and that's why you need to master exit strategies. Again, I've uh, written an entire book on this subject, the only book ever written on position management for this one strategy, and it's 50 pages in the Encyclopedia for Covered Call Writing, which is the book I'm going to show you in just a minute. And it's been number one on Amazon.com on covered call writing uh, for the last two years. Thank you for that. I divide exit strategies into two time frames, the first half of the contract and the second half. Here are the strategies you could use in the first half, and we're going to concentrate on the second one, which I call hitting a double. Keep in mind that any exit strategy you use starts with buying back the option. Now, in this particular case, I sold the initial option for 410. STO means sell to open. Now, despite all that great screening, the price dipped. Now, when it dipped, I was able to buy back that same option for 85 cents. And in my material, I have what's called a 20%, 10% guideline, which will tell you when to buy back the option. Now, sold at 410, bought it back at 85 cents. I waited to see if it bounced back up. It did, and I was able to sell to open that same option to 310. So here's what I want you to do. Forget about the 410 that I generated initially, $410 per contract. Forget that. After that, I had an option credit of 225. I had a debit of 85 and a credit of 310. So if I had four contracts, folks, that's $900 cash extra over and above the 410 that I generated by using this exit strategy, and it took me about four minutes to do by being prepared and taking advantage of the opportunity. Had this not bounced up, I would have had a different exit strategy plan called rolling down. Now, as we approach expiration Friday, we if the price of the stock is even one penny above the strike price, we could roll the option. And that means buying back the July 50 call and selling the August 50 call. Or we could roll out and up, buy back the July 50 call and sell the August 55 call. And there are a lot of criteria that we use to determine whether we should do that or not. Here's a, an example. I'm going to rush through it because I think we only have about five minutes. But I want you to see this because we use it so much with covered call writing. Uh, this is a real life trade. I had about seven or eight contracts. We're going to simplify it to one. And I bought 100 shares of ARMH at 3210 sold the out of the money 33 call for 80 cents. That becomes a return on option, a rule of 2.5%. Again, ladies and gentlemen, these are one month returns. Now on the upper right, circled in green, you can see that on expiration Friday, and I took this screenshot about 3.30 Eastern time, about a half an hour before options expired, that 33 strike was in the money because the price of the stock was 34.31. So my share appreciation on that previous contract was $90. I can't count it up to 34.31 because 
I have an obligation to sell at 33. So it's an additional $90 profit or another 2.8%. My one month return on this trade was 5.3%. Okay, let's put that away and put it in the bank and forget about it. Now the question becomes, do we allow our shares to be sold at 33 or do we roll the option? So in order to determine that, we have to look at an options chain. Now remember, we, bought, we sell at the bid, the lower, and buy at the ask. So to buy back this option, the 33, would cost us $1.35. To sell the next month's option, the 33, was $2.10. So we have an option credit of $0.75. Cents. This is a little part of the Elman calculator. So we have, we've generated $75 credit on a cost basis of $3,300 which is what our shares are worth at that point in time. So here's what the calculator tells us. We are guaranteed a one month return of 2.27% as long as share depreciation does not exceed 3.8% by expiration. If that meets your goal, roll the option. If not, allow your shares to be sold and on Monday you'll have all this cash in your account to enter a new position. Now many of you know that there are a lot of strategies related to covered call writing. They're not exactly the same. Uh, selling cash secured puts is similar, but not exactly the same. That's my next book coming out soon. Plus the other strategies you see on the screenshot, they're all in my material. Okay. Now, um, this is the package I'm offering, the main package, the one I recommend, uh, my book, my DVD program, and a month's free membership. Sells on my website, as you could see, for $4.19. For today, it says today only, but I'm extending it to tomorrow, a $50 discount. You can get that discount by going to the bluecollarinvestor.com slash store. Put promo code INSPIRATION50 for your $50 discount. On all my other books, the student book and all my other covered call writing books, a 10% discount. Put in promo code invest, INSPIRATION50. 10. Free stuff. On my website, on the top middle, circled in red, free resources, that's where you can get my calculator for free. Just put in your email address and you can download it right to your computer along with the user guide. I've also written a glossary on covered call writing terms. You may want to bookmark that. And then a very popular on the upper right beginner's corner series. That's also free. An eight-part video tutorial where you can download the PowerPoint slides as well, all for free. And the files I talked about before are in that link as well. Uh, my newsletter, go to my blog, sign up for my newsletter. It'll be worth your while. I spend hours every week writing these articles which have all the charts and graphs. I don't just write two paragraphs. I spend a lot of time on these articles. They'll be wor well worth the time. And best of all, it's for free. And folks, there you have it. I did it in 45 minutes. I cannot believe it. Um, to the uh, William or Barry, if there are any other questions and if there's any time left, I'm happy to open it up. Yes, Alan, you have about two minutes. If there's any questions anybody would like to ask, Alan, go ahead and enter them now. Okay, great. Yeah, go ahead, I can't Alan. see anything. Yeah. Yeah, so if, no, go ahead. if there's anything else you'd like to say, Alan, you have about two more minutes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, first of all, I want to again thank you for inviting me, William, and uh, thank everybody for attending. I answer all my emails, so if you think of any questions after the fact, right at the bottom of the screen there, Alan at the bluecollarinvestor.com. Uh, Barry uh, Bergman, our director of research, he answers questions as well. Barry at the bluecollarinvestor.com. Uh, my website has uh, archived over 300 articles relating to this strategy, all for free, in, including over 100 um, uh, Ask Allen videos where I answer questions by video. So it'll be well worth your while to uh, come to the website and take advantage of those free resources as well. Thank you very much for the invitation, and thanks to everybody for attending today's webinar. Great. Thank you, Alan. Once again, that was Alan Elman from the Blue Collar Investor.